Dr. Thomas Holland from his book uh, Crowned with Glory. The KJV is the greatest English translation the world has ever known. Sadly, of late, it has fallen under attack. Many have used faulty forensic reasoning in order to discredit the authorized version. Some express a certain amount of disdain for the authorized version with meaningless objections. They do not like this or that rendering and therefore seek to find a flaw in this literary masterpiece. The difference has more to do with the manner of how words or phrases are understood and not the correctness of the translation itself. The translators were great scholars. Gustavus S. Payne noted that the King's translators were not superb writers doing scholarly work, but were superb scholars doing superb writing. Judged by their other extant works, the writing of what would become the authorized version should have been far beyond their abilities, yet they were able to reach beyond themselves. Gee, I wonder how they did that. The KJV is not only a literary masterpiece, its representation of the original languages is phenomenal. It is not enough for a proper translation to correctly transmit the words from one language into another, it also must carry the sense of the original. Without question, the authorized version has successfully accomplished this extremely difficult task. Professor Gerald Hammond of the University of Manchester in England has correctly noted that the KJV translators have taken care to reproduce the syntactic details of the originals. Often the authorized version has the kind of transparency which makes it possible for the reader to see the original clearly. It lacks the narrow interpretative bias of the modern versions and is the stronger for it. Although its beauty has been compared to the writings of Shakespeare, it is vastly easier to read than Shakespeare, with equal influence upon our native tongue. The history and effect of the KJV has had on our language not only speaks of its great literary value, but of the divine hand upon it. Okay, to say uh, that the new Bible versions have suspicious origins <laughs> is an understatement. Um, so who are the people behind the new versions? Gail Ripplinger wrote a book called um, New Age Bible Versions. It's probably one of the most uh, thoroughly researched books ever written. Uh, she talks about the New Age movement's expressed goal they actually say this in their books in meetings they say that their goal is to infiltrate the Christian church and gradually change the Bible to conform to the Antichrist's one world religion and there have been a lot of weird things associated with the new versions and the editors of them uh, for example, uh, at least five of them, at least five new version editors in one form or another have lost their ability to speak. Um, one of them uh, went insane, had to be committed. Uh, the reference dictionary used by uh, new version editors to research Greek etymology was edited by Adolf Hitler's high priest of propaganda. Um, they state uh, new version editors are shown to be in agreement with Luciferians, occultists, and New Age philosophy. Um, I'll just read you a couple quotes. Um, the NIV's chief editor, Edward Edwin Palmer, wrote, this shows the great error 
that is so prevalent today in some orthodox Protestant circles, namely that regeneration depends on faith, and that in order to be born again, man must first accept Jesus as his Savior. He says that's an error. Uh, this NASB guy, Philip Schaff, uh, he was talking about the differences between the King James and the NASV, and he said, the changes thus far are in the right direction and should contain the germs of a new theology. Uh, Virginia Mullencott, who was a consultant for the NIV Translation Committee, she helped them uh, decide how to translate certain passages and how they should sound. She said, my lesbianism has always been a part of me. Yeah, this woman written a couple of really weird books about uh, sensuality and Christianity and okay let's see okay compare the formatting of the King James Version next to the NIV see the verses the KJV verses are aligned to the left side so you can read the verse numbers in a straight vertical line. See, up and down, left side. The makers of the NIV put their verses in paragraph form so that the numbers are scattered. They didn't do that for aesthetic purposes. They did that so you wouldn't notice that they took out verse 28. Look at it again. It jumps from verse 26 comes from verse 27 to 29. There are people who have read the NIV a dozen times or more and never noticed that. Today we have over 150 different English Bible versions. 150. And as Ruckman once pointed out, if you can correct the same book 150 times and it's still not done yet, you are insane.